Hello, Red Wave. Welcome to Beware of Bulldogs podcast. We are your hosts, Caleb and Caleb. Don't forget it. Caleb, welcome. Thank you once again for doing this with me. Today, everybody, we preview the dogs in Logan against the Utah State Aggies. Mr. Plutz, how are you doing today, man? How's the week been? You know, it's a, it's a new week here. Uh, dogs are uh, ready to turn the page. And, uh, you know, we, we haven't really had this feeling in a long time of, like, feeling like, um, you know, maybe a little bit of concern coming off a loss and obviously, um, you know, just dealing with, um, you know, a loss in general. I mean, it's been 14 games. Uh, win streak was uh, pretty nice and enjoyable. Um, so now, you know, we're back to reality here and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're checking our game film and making sure that we are making our adjustments too. Um, because there's, you know, a lot of uncertainty with this team going forward. And, and we were talking before we hit record that, I mean, it's crazy that we're, we're on game seven here. I mean, we're, we're halfway through the season it's flying by. So, um, we are enjoying it, but yeah, this, this is going to be another tough matchup for Fresno state. At the beginning of the season, you said this could be a trap game. We're going to preview it right now. October 8th, 2022, Caleb, was the last time Fresno State lost a football game. That was against Boise. And it had almost been an entire year since we went through that. And you know what? I enjoyed every second of it. I <laughs> don't like uh, sad Sundays, and uh, especially doing live streams. That was the first for us doing a live stream after a loss. Very interesting. It, it was a lot of fun, though. I Beware of Bulldogs helps all the, the emotions. I, I feel like we can all vent, get it out. Yes, it's recorded and up forever, but you know what? We ask for forgiveness later, right? Of course, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, we're, we're, we're all processing our internal emotions together, which I, I think is healthy. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. It's better than bottling up in bottling them up inside and then one day just blowing up. But, so so all you guys out there, thank you. You guys help us a lot tremendously. And I hope I hope we help you in some way as well. So today we're gonna talk about Utah State, what we know about them. We have not had our get to know yet. That is coming up. Uh we are gonna have our gonna make you sweat. Everybody dance now. Keys to the game, weather, where you could catch the game on TV, final score predictions. And then, uh, and the, then it's time for you guys to party because games on Friday. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I know. The, also, the game is at five. We'll touch on all of that. The game's at five on a Friday. It doesn't make sense. Um, and then, uh, yeah, then we got to get ready for other things as well. But uh, it's going to be tough for everybody to catch this game, if especially when you get off at five and kickoff is at five. That's a rough one. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, before, before we get started on uh, Utah State, I want to tell you about Flora Flower Co. If you need flowers, check out the local flower shop that's modern and unique and supports local growers. They are open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Shepherd and Willow. They're your one-stop shop for gifts. Not only do they have flowers and a florist in shop that will help you create any bouquet that you would like, they have other things for gifts that your loved one would enjoy. Use code FRESNO15. That's FRESNO, the number 15 at checkout for 15% off. You can use that online or in the store for 15% off your purchase. And if you want a subscription for your loved one, you can do that. It comes with free delivery for uh, their subscribers. So check out Flora Flower Co. All right, Caleb, Utah State currently has, uh, well, they are three and three. They have a loss to Iowa, 24-14 loss. That's game one, so I don't, you know, take take it as you will. Uh, they put up 78 on Idaho State and won that game. They lost 39-21 to Air Force. Uh, they lost 45-38 against a good James Madison team. They beat UConn by one, 34-33, and then... Last week, they scored 37 unanswered on Colorado State and beat them 44 to 24. They were down 17 to zero, scored 37 unanswered, and ended up winning that game. Looking at the schedule, Caleb, and knowing what you know, we watched a little bit of film on them. 
how does this make you feel initially about while well, looking at their uh, their schedule? Well, going go back to week one, I mean, you know, powerhouse offense, Iowa put up 24. So, um, you know, that shows me that, you know, the the, the defense is capable of uh, being penetrated. We'll just say that. But, you know, <laughs> for, for the most part, I mean, you know, th- this is a really potent offense. Um, you know, their their quarterback, um, you know, Lega looks like a very competent quarterback and, you know, he looks good throwing the ball. Um, you know, he's, he's thrown a handful of picks though. So he's definitely not perfect, but, um, you know, they're, they're off out and, you know, they run a lot of screen plays. They get guys in space and they have some really good athletes. So, um, yeah, they're definitely capable of scoring a lot of points and yeah, they, they've gone up against a couple of tough teams. I mean, JMU is a really good team. Um, you know, Colorado State, how they're still kind of rebuilding, and obviously Air Force, um, you know, leading the conference this year. So, you know, they've, they've gone up against some tough opponents so far. But I mean, really, the main trend I've noticed is that they, they tend to get down early. Um, I mean, that happened in Colorado State. They were down 17 0. They were down 17 0 to UConn. They were down big, I think, like 20 to 0 to JMU. So, um, 24 0 to JMU. So I think oh, obviously I think they're kind of similar to our dogs in that regard that, you know, maybe they aren't starting, um, you know, as quick as they'd like. So maybe that's an opportunity for Fresno State to strike. But yeah, de- definitely a beatable team, but also a really dangerous team. Yeah. This team kind of reminds me about how we played against Wyoming. They will let you score as many points as you want in the first half. And the second half, uh, their offense figures out how to play. And uh, I mean, their defense isn't as good as ours, but their offense will start scoring points in the second half once they go down by at least double digits. <laughs> their defense, however, gives up lots of points. And that's what stands out to me. At 34, uh, 33 to UConn, 45 to JMU, 39 to a triple option Air Force team that likes to melt clock. And then, like you said, 24 to a great Iowa offense and 28 to Idaho State. So, you know, I think there is a lot of opportunity for our our offense to score points. And I know a lot of you are wondering who's going to be quarterback. I am preparing for Logan Fife. Hill, what about you? I am too. I think that, especially with the bye week coming up, I, I think it might be... A little risky to run him out there too soon. And, you know, if he can, you know, get a solid two weeks of rest and recovery on the ankle or lower leg, um, I think that'll probably suit him better for a comeback at the end of the season where, you know, the Rs are going to need to string together some conference victories to stay in the hunt for a conference championship. So I'm I'm definitely expecting, um, you know, Logan Fife this game. I think he did show a little bit more potential in this last game against Wyoming. Um, you know, made a spectacular play, also made a couple that, um, you know, was shades of Logan from last season. So, I mean, I, you know, we'll get to it in our keys, but I think that, um, you know, Logan's definitely going to be, um, you know, a reason why Fresno State wins or loses this, loses this game. I totally agree. Also, other news that has come out since then. By the way, everyone, if you're on YouTube, I'm sorry. I, I came straight from work and I have dirt all over me. So... That's this. I yes, it's not my food. It's dirt. Anyways, uh, Cam Lockridge out for season. We were wondering about what was going on. We weren't getting anything. Now we know Cam Lockridge had surgery and he is out for season. I was hoping to see him out there last week. It was not the case, and we won't see him the rest of this season. However, I'm sure. I mean, we know he's out there at practice coaching guys up. Um, and then uh, Isaiah Johnson who is also injured. We're not sure about him yet. If he's going to be playing this week, Uh, hopefully, but still can't answer that. 100%. Same with Damian Moore. (laughs) I know one of our (laughs) asks us about Damian Moore every week. Still don't know about Damian Moore. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, uh, at least on the defensive side, you know, this is where we're going to 
see the test of the the depth of this uh, this defensive core. I know, you know, we were certainly very complimentary of um, you know the the DB room earlier in the season. Um, you know, a lot of that due to Cam Lockridge because he's a very very good player. So yeah, we, we definitely you know wish him a speedy recovery here, um, and you know, hopefully he can you know get back to playing shape quickly. But yeah, I mean, Alzillian Hamilton's going to need to step up. Um, you know, he got exposed a little bit last week against Wyoming, so I'm sure there will be a lot of targets going his way um, this game. And, you know, even, you know, guys beyond him, I think, you know, next up we have, you know, Julian Neal and I think Jomari and Briggs are, you know, the not, you know the, the twos at least for cornerbacks. So a couple unproven guys. I know um, Julian Neal got burned a couple times, I think, in the Kent State game. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to see how, how good this, uh, you know, this, this defensive back group can be, um, you know, moving forward without Lockridge. And, you know, I think, you know, I, Isaiah Johnson is a big piece that's missing too, um, just with how um, unable the defensive line was last week to be able to get consistent pressure on the quarterback. And Colorado State wasn't able to do a whole lot either from what I saw against Utah State. I, I could be wrong on that, but from what I watched and observed, they didn't do a great job, and Lagas Laga had a bunch of time to throw the ball. <clears throat> All right. In oh, players. I want to we'll name some players for you guys to keep an eye on. So Laga is their quarterback. Uh he's thrown for 975 yards as of right now. Uh they he came in later in the year. Uh, they they had a Hillstead. At, at quarterback for a while, for a second there, and uh, he got some stats too. Rushing, names to keep in mind. Booth, Fison, and Briggs. Those are the three guys you're going to see running the ball. And then receiving, uh, Royals and Vaughn are their one and two. They each have seven touchdowns and about 500 yards receiving. They're good players. Uh, I've watched them moss a couple of teams. So they all can play, and uh, not to mention their their tight end lane. Um, they use him as much as they can, but they really do like to spread you out. But those yeah. are the names right now. Well, Davis is another name to keep an eye on too as a receiver. Right. Yeah, and it's it's interesting looking at uh, at least looking at the box score from their most recent game against Colorado State. You know, those top three guys, Royals, Vaughn, and Davis, those were the only three to record a reception uh, in the game. So uh, really interesting that they didn't deviate there. And, you know, they all had over 100 yards. And uh, I think they all had at least one touchdown receiving too. So, uh, you know, definitely very capable. And, you know, those, those are going to be the key guys that are going to be, um, you know, in space for this Utah State team. Mm-hmm. We're going to get t- into our Gonna Make You Sweat and – Everybody dance now in a second, but let's start with our keys to the game, Caleb. And when I think of our keys to the game, I would like to see us just be solid on offense. I, I want to put a, a good ga- offensive game together, and that starts with the o, the o line. So I'm going to say it's all on the O line offensively because I believe we can do whatever we want if the O line is is uh, hitting on all cylinders or firing on all cylinders. And I'm talking running game. I want to see them move the ball on the ground. We have not seen them be able to do that this year. Every week, I feel like I'm saying we need to take that next step and get yards on the ground. I know it's hard for us, and so we have to rely on a short passing game. But key to the game, Elijah Gilliam, Let's get in, let's get him in open space and let's open up some holes for Sherrod to get him burning through there and making guys miss tackles. Oh, so let's run the ball. I want to see us run the ball and establish the running game. What about you? Yeah, just to comment on that, I think this will be a good kind of benchmark game for this Fresno State offensive line because um, you know the the Wyoming trenches were very good. I think probably towards the top of the conference, and so. You know, Fresno State, the offensive line, you know, it's pretty much been the same dudes every week. And so I, I don't think there's really going to be much change there. So, you know, the, these are our guys. And if they are able to 
make something happen against uh, Utah State, it's going to be it's going to give me a little more hope uh, for the rest of the conference play. If it's another repeat performance where you know we're total rushing like 50 yards in the whole game, I think it's going to make for a really difficult um, you know remainder of the conference play because yeah, I think Utah State is probably kind of middle of the pack, and so I think we need to be able to um, at least be competent against middle of the pack in terms of you know uh, you know pass rush or excuse me yeah, we, have, run blocking. we have to get out of being a one dimensional team. We have to at some point in the season. I like it sooner than later. <laughs> exactly. So in terms of my keys to the game, I think we, we need to continue on um, at least the Utah State trend of uh, the Aggies going down early. So Fresno State needs to actually come out and score a touchdown on the first drive and um, you know just maintain that. Um, what am I trying to say? That... The momentum, momentum that yeah. I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if momentum is the right word, but yeah, you know, just being able to put a touchdown drive together, get a defensive stop, and go and score again, um, which is something that the dogs yeah you know, haven't been able to do, and um, you know, in the last game. So I think that's going to be important. Is you know, get get them down because you know Utah State's going to be throwing the ball around and you know getting big chunk plays, and you know the, the dogs need to have a bit of a cushion, I think, to be able to. Uh, you know, play their game and not have to force throws when, you know, maybe that's, um, you know, not Logan's strong, strong point there. So that's, that's one key. My other key is win winning the turnover battle. Um, you know, we saw an interception from Logan last week and obviously we've seen this Utah state team is very capable of turning the ball over uh, themselves and as, as well as, you know, getting turnovers, you know, their safety, uh, what was the name Ike something? Uh, he had you know a couple picks last game, and I think three total in the year. So they they have good defensive players in the secondary, and uh, definitely capable of getting some takeaways. So Fresno State needs to be on the positive side of that turnover battle, just to, you know hopefully get some you know plus field position and translate that into points, and you know not let Utah State do that to to the dogs. Yeah, defensively, I'd love to see us create a pass rush we didn't have one last game i would love to see that happen so i'm taking things that didn't happen last game and i'm making them my keys to the game that's going to reassure me that we are getting better that the coaches see the problem I, we know they do and the players are working at it we need to devise some blitzes that get pressure we can't blitz i think we blitzed seven times against wyoming and created one pressure off those or no one or no i don't remember the exact number but it's one of those to me that's not right that's as a coach it's almost unacceptable you blitz to bring pressure and get the quarterback out of his comfort zone so if we blitz we must bring we must get pressure on the quarterback and then i just love to see our d line line up in a four man front and get there Let's move him out of the pocket with four guys. Uh, <clears throat> is it just Jazon Jax? Mm -hmm. He was out the first half against Wyoming, came in the second half, and he was one of those guys that you know, changed the game. He was creating a little bit of pressure more so than we were. And so he's going to be here for the whole game. And I would like to see what difference he makes right at the start of the game and not to mention, I believe there's some other guys getting reps at, uh, at the edge because Isaiah Johnson is still working through some injuries. So I, I to a, to a CV Nomura is back. We saw him last game get a couple reps and <clears throat> transfer from USC. I'm interested to see how many reps he gets this game. And if, if he is, the player he was hyped up to be at USC. I'm really excited for him. Let's just put it that way. So I really want this D line and this O line to take a step forward this week. And I believe they can. Absolutely. I, I think there's an opportunity for blitzing off the edge for this Fresno state defense. Looking back at the you know Utah state game last week against Colorado state. I mean, there was a couple early where, um, you know, Colorado State was able to get some some pressure on uh, Cooper Lega. So 
definitely an opportunity there. And, you know, that plays into getting takeaways in the secondary if, you know, quarterback's under pressure and maybe making a throw that, um, you know, he shouldn't. So, yep, I agree there. Definitely a key to the game. Speaking of blitzing, you need to blitz to Eastie's wood shop for your custom woodworking and home decor needs because the holidays are coming up and don't be like me and wait. Let Eastie's wood shop create you a custom woodworking or home decor, uh, anything that you need. Let them bring your ideas to life. Check out shopew.store to send them a message. That's shopew.store to send them a message and for their line of personalized gifts this holiday season. Use code BEWARE for 15% off your first purchase. That's code BEWARE at shopew.store. Code BEWARE for 15% off your first purchase. Hurry up. Blitz. Get there. Beat the holiday season. All right. Let's move into are going to make you sweat. As an expert on sweat and sweating, I may as well be a sweat scientist. <laughs> All right, Kale, what's going to make you sweat this, this game? All right, th this one's pretty simple. If Utah State is able to hit explosive plays early and you know maybe expose a weakness in the Fresno State secondary, I think it could be a really long night for the Fresno State defense. And, you know, I think we, we've seen Coach Coyle is capable of making adjustments, you know, usually at halftime. Um, but, you know, if we're not able to make that adjustment early enough, you know, we could see ourselves again like Fresno State was in a hole against uh, Wyoming down big early. So, you know, I, I'm sweating if there's – Big plays, explosive plays, because Utah State has has the weapons out there, and you know could get us in a hole quick. And I don't know if the Fresno State offense is built for a lot of quick scores. And I think Fresno State's offense needs to you know become more ball control, time of possession control, and you know more rely on that as opposed to um, you know a lot of explosive plays like you know Utah State I think has as their strength. So. That'll that'll make me sweat, especially if it's early and you know the dogs get down in the hole. Yeah, I what's going to make me sweat is from what I've seen on film is they like to spread you out, and what happens is that opens up the field. And so if they stretch us thin, and they are able to run it up the gut, then we uh, and we can't stop the run, then we're going to have trouble, and we could dig ourselves in a hole like we did against Wyoming, and I don't want to do that. And also, because they like to pass the ball and we are missing Cam Lockridge, how do the young guys do? If the young guys aren't performing well, picking up their studs on the outside, I'm going to sweat a little bit. So it, it's going to be interesting defensively for us. I also want to add, I don't want to sweat too much during this game. I try not to sweat during games, but... uh offensively we have struggled the well against Wyoming we struggled and we have to come out of the gate quick and if, if we can't figure things out whichever quarterback is starting then I'm going to be sweating we we have to figure things out all right everybody dance now CNC Fresno Football Factory everybody dance now Caleb what's going to make you dance this game I'll be dancing if Fresno State collects three interceptions on uh, Cooper Lega. Um, I think that it's very capable. And if what we mentioned previously in terms of our keys, um, you know, can come true and putting some pressure on him, you know, obviously Carlton Johnson has shown the ability to, um, you know, have multiple interceptions in the game and, you know, Hamilton has picked off one too. So I think it's, it's uh, doable. And I think this game, the pace is going to be a little bit more, um, a little quicker than the last Wyoming game. I think there's going to be more possessions on both sides. So, mm -hmm. you know, usually that leads to uh, more turnovers and um, you know, other opportunities like that. So I'm dancing if there's three interceptions by this Fresno State defense. I like it. I like it. You took mine. I was going to say three interceptions. <laughs> <laughs> well, perfect. Then we'll, we'll, we'll both do it. Perfect. Plus, I would I will always dance if we run a kickoff return back for a touchdown. We got to end the curse.
been since 2008. Uh, Horton, Fresno guy, took one back last week against Utah State. Started high stepping at the 40. It's wild. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be fun. I'd love to take one back. That would make me dance. All right, Caleb, we're gonna have you tell us about the weather in Logan and our and the TV and the spread. But first, tell me about Manage X and how property owners can use them and get a hold of them. Absolutely. Yeah. So if, uh, you know, you're a landlord or a property owner here in Fresno or Clovis, you might be uh, needing some property management services. And so that's where ManageX can help you out. They're a full service property management company and they service uh, single family homes, small apartments and office and industrial property. So uh, if you need help with any of those, um, you know, you can get in touch with them on their website, managex.net. And uh, you can see some more information there and get in touch. And they're great supporters of the program and Fresno State Athletics, too. And I also got to tell you guys about Givoli Winery. Givoli Winery is a local winery located on Biola Avenue, just north of Shaw. They do all, everything in-house. They grow the grapes. They make the wine. Winemakers are Fresno State Enology, former Fresno State Enology students. And they are open Saturdays and Sundays from noon to 5 weekdays by appointments only. And I got to tell you this Saturday, there's no football game and they have the crush coming up on Saturday, starting at six o'clock. I they're going full. I love Lucy out there. Take off your shoes, hop in the, the big trough and jump in the grapes. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that's at Givoli winery on Biola Avenue, just North of Shaw. And uh, they also have brick oven pizza, wood fire brick oven pizza there on Saturday, Sundays, noon to five and weekdays by appointment only. Check them out, givlywinery.com. All right. Caleb, what is the weather going to be like in Yo in Logan? Yeah, so this is, uh, I think, a fortunate time, again, to be going to, um, you know, the mountain time zone. You know, the dogs were fortunate last week you know going to wyoming you know for the most part you know pretty tame weather and i think the dogs are going to have a repeat of that this friday um you know in logan utah you know the high for the day is only 59 degrees i think you know by the time it gets to kick off you know probably going to be low 50s high 40s so should be a little bit colder than uh the dogs have been experiencing here but you know, no precipitation, wind should be minimal. So, you know, overall should be just some nice football weather. And, you know, we're, we're definitely getting into fall here. So um, no real concerns, you know, going here. You know, maybe something we haven't even pointed out. I mean, dogs are playing in U Logan, Utah. So, I mean, what a perfect opportunity for, for Logan Fife to have, um, you know, a breakout game here for Fresno State. So, um, you know, some more details on the game. Like you mentioned earlier, 5 p.m. kickoff, which, um, you know, doesn't uh, suit uh, all the working folk here um, if, you know, that's when they're uh, able to clock out. So definitely set your DVR uh, on CBS Sportsnet. And so that way you can make sure you get to the kickoff and watch the whole game. But uh, if you're not able to, definitely oh, catch it. Open early. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> you can get done early. Yep. Yeah, get get in get in early. Get out early. So yeah, CBS Sportsnet will be the broadcast, and uh, otherwise you can catch on the radio with our friends Paul, Pat, and Cam. So um, definitely tune in there because you know they get. This is a lot better insight than uh, you're going to get on the TV broadcast. So uh, we definitely recommend tuning in there. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the basics for the game. I mean, in terms of what the numbers are saying, you know, Fresno State is uh, favored by six points. I think the initial line opened at around seven. So it moved a bit in the Aggies' favor. Uh, point total over under set at 57 right now. So uh, a little bit higher scoring game predicted compared to uh, the two recent uh, games for fresno state so how are you feeling about the line and the total uh i'm feeling good about it i think that there is i mean i, I think rightfully so we sh are favored by six was it six or six and a half six right now six yeah uh, uh, it's going to be a good game both teams can be explosive on offense uh before we get to our final predictions i've i've got Two more ads for you, then we'll hit our final predict predictions and then get out of here. Uh, the Vine Church in Fresno. The Vine Church 
in Fresno is located on Shaw, just west of Grantland. On Sundays, 10 a.m. is when they begin. If you're looking for a support group, you want to strengthen your community, you want to join a small group, come check us out. The Vine Church on Shaw, just west of Grantland, Sundays at 10 a.m. My wife and I go there, so let us know when you're going. I'm happy to meet you there and check you out. Check it out with you. And uh, Pastor Greg is a head pastor there. Greg Bennett, great guy, great family. Well, the Vine is a big supporter of Dwyer Bulldogs and Fresno. And uh, we hope to see you there. And lastly, new sponsor for the show, Fresno State Alumni Association. They one are going to let you know all the things to do if you are an alumni of Fresno State through Buera Bulldogs, and we thank them for that. And if you're looking for things to do the week of homecoming, the Fresno State Alumni Association has you covered. Wednesday, the 25th, 25th of October, is the unveiling of the Victory Bulldog statue. Then Thursday night is homecoming alumni mixer at the Smith, Ca- Smith Camp Alumni House. Friday night is homecoming takeover at Crow and Wolf, and we will be there recording so make sure you come and stop by and share your thoughts with us. And then Saturday the, tw- Saturday the 28th is game day. And you can join the alumni tailgate at the neutral zone in the white lot. There is something for everyone the week of homecoming. To learn more or to purchase a homecoming game day bundle, visit alumni.fresnostate.edu slash homecoming. That's alumni.fresnostate.edu slash Homecoming. Big thanks to the Alumni Association for the support of Dwyer Bulldogs and Fresno State Athletics. All right. Final predictions, Caleb. How is this going? Where are we going? Boy, I, I really can't. I'm I'm having a hard time putting some numbers on here. So I, I do still have a couple other thoughts that I kind of want to work through here. Yeah. I mean, do you think that there's an opportunity for Logan Fife to have, say, like, 50 rushing yards um, like is there any chance that you know there's just kind of a big change in play calling all of a sudden we're doing some run pass option and logan is running it you know maybe six or eight times and he has you know 50 yards is there any chance of that uh yeah i would say there's more so of a chance than if mike of that happening than if mikey was playing and i would prefer to see that happen where if logan's playing that he's running the ball we know he is a mobile quarterback. We've seen them call some run pass option plays with Mikey in and they were successful. Haven't seen it or didn't see it against Wyoming. Wish I, or, or we did. And the reads just weren't successful or the plays weren't successful. I would love to see Logan moving in Logan on the ground, uh, especially. And uh, yes, 50 yards on the ground, I think is very doable for, Logan Fife this weekend. I agree. I, I think that could be a difference here. Um, and just obviously something has to happen here in this running game. And there needs to be some creativity. Fife has shown the ability to run. And I think that you know Fresno State should should utilize that opportunity. So I, I'm hoping that the Logan Fife run game is explosive or at least keeps the Utah state defense um, off balanced enough to where the short passing game is a little bit easier for, for him to manage and the DNs aren't, you know, batting everything down. So I, I am obviously optimistic. That's why we are the official fan podcast for the state. We are um, always going to be rooting for our dogs. Like you predicted, or like you mentioned earlier, I had predicted that this was the game I was worried about. It wasn't necessarily the <laughs> Wyoming game. So I am still very worried about this game. But I do think that Fresno State can come away with the victory. It's going to be high scoring. And that's another big question mark because, you know, can this offense keep up? But I have it 34 31 Fresno State victory. I think we're going over on the points. I do think that Utah State's going to keep it close and cover but I do think it will be a Fresno State victory. I'm going 34-29, dogs. This uh, uh, same same number same number for the dogs there. I, I am a little worried that, about the dogs scoring that many points. Can they? We've seen them do it, but can Logan do it? 
And then if, you know, Fife is, isn't a hundred percent, can he do it? And we struggled against Wyoming. Now everybody knows how to stop us. They got film on us, but I mean, we have film on everybody else, but you know, look, it's going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be good for us to see how the dogs respond after that loss. It was a mm-hmm. devastating loss for rank 24th in the nation at, when that happened. Last thing for me, Caleb, <clears throat> now that our predictions are out there is year after year. And I, this isn't negative. I, this is a, Positive thing. Please take don't take this the wrong way, everyone listening. Year after year, the dogs have high expectations. We get ranked. We lose. What does the Fresno State football program need to do to take that next step? Maybe lose the opening game so it's only uphill <laughs> from there. I mean, the, uh, the uh, undefeated season is um, elusive uh, for Fresno State, so uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that the, the coaching staff keeps the team grounded, at least with what they're preaching to the media. And you know, I would expect that to be consistent, you know, in the team meetings. So, I mean, I don't think that's, you know, really anything, you know, coaching wise or message wise that needs to change. I mean, it seems like it's a one game at a time approach. And it was just kind of a matter of time before the dogs got, you know, slipped up a bit. And, you know, it's really tough to be perfect every week. So, I think what matters is how they, the team responds. Like you mentioned, you know, are they going to be fired up and bounce back and want to start a new, uh, you know, winning streak or, you know, is there still some hangover from that? And are they going to be a little dejected and slow coming off the bus, especially going back to the mountain time zone. But to answer your question, how do we prevent the letdown every year? I, I don't know. I think that's just part of college sports and what, what makes it fun is, you know, these are 18 to 24 year old athletes that, you know, they have have real life experiences that, you know, they're going through. They actually have homework that they're doing, too, hopefully. And so, you know, they, they aren't just pros that are, um, you know, training all day and, you know, this is their job. So I think that's part of why we love college football and, you know, makes it to where, you know, anyone can go down every weekend and why Fresno State has had so much success going up against, you know, power five opponents. So I, I don't really want to change that because that's, you know, part of what makes the sport great. I'm with you. Thank you for answering. Uh, that's it for me. Anything else from you, Caleb? I don't think so, man. A big, big week. And, you know, the dogs are going to be limping into the bye week. So, you know, bye week would have been nice to catch it this week, but. Thankfully, it's coming next week so that they can rest up and hopefully recharge for, you know, the final, you know, five game sprint of the season and hopefully get some get some luck with hopefully Air Force taking down Wyoming this week and, um, you know, some other help around the conference to, you know, get all the teams some losses to give Fresno State a better shot at uh, getting a matchup in the Mountain West Championship game. But it should be a good game and hopefully the dogs offense can keep up and, um, yeah, look forward to our live stream on Sunday too, win or lose, lose. Uh, you know, we appreciate everyone in the chat, keeping it lively. It's making it a lot, a lot of fun for us. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening and shout out to our sponsors, the vine church, flora flower co Givoli winery, Manajex, Eastie's Woodshop, and the alumni association for all your support and make sure you check them out. We will see you guys for our get to know Utah state episode. And then uh, let us know where you're watching the game from. Uh, we'll see if Caleb and I can make it out somewhere to watch. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's happening. It's going to be tough. It's Friday. But once again, thanks for uh, listening. Stay safe. Stay healthy. God bless you guys. And as always, go dogs. Go dogs.